Hey guys, this is Sin. So I've created a uh, little program here that will download uh, Mars pictures from NASA. So let's go ahead and run it. You'll notice that there is no temp folder and that the program will create it. It created a temp folder and also this NASA request.txt file. Uh, inside it are just a list of dates that were supplied in the test. And as you can see, it's downloading the images right now. This is using my cell phone as the Wi-Fi connection because I've already exceeded my limit on my actual home Wi-Fi. So you can see it downloaded the images, and here they are. It popped up the browser. Um, so let's uh, take a look at what um, went on under the hood. So the main program um, starts off in program.cs. This is a console application, so this is the entry point. So you can see it instantiated our downloader class. It ensures that the ctemp and that NASA request.txt file both exist. Uh, it then um, reads the content of that text file. It iterates and goes through every single date. It then tries to make an API call to NASA to retrieve that image based on that date. And if successful, it will go ahead and save that file name into the list of file names that we're collecting as the program is running. Once it's gone through all the dates and we have a list of files that's uh, count that's greater than zero, we will go ahead and output that into an HTML file and then launch that HTML file using the uh, process.start. So the bulk of the work is really not being done here. As you can tell, this is just a simple for loop and it's just calling a bunch of methods from the downloader class. So the downloader class, this is where the work is being done. Uh, ensure request file uh, with this exists, just make sure that the uh, C temp folder exists and that that text file with the list of dates inside it exists as well. And this is where the uh, retrieving of um, the data um, from NASA begins. Basically, given a date, we will go ahead and make a, a REST API call to NASA, uh, read the content from that API call, and uh, deserialize uh, the content that was returned to us um, uh, from its JSON version to its C Sharp POCO version. Uh, we do some error handling to see if one, you have an internet connection, and two, that you haven't uh, reached your limit for the day. So once we get a URL, which is where the image is stored, we will actually go ahead and download that uh, image, that URL, and save it to a uh, local file, which is with the same, um, that local file is actually retrieved from that URL. Uh, it's the same file name. Um, and so the download file is very simple. We basically just create a new web client, supply the URI, and that same file name that's given in the URI. Um, so we do that nth number of times, and once we're done, we output uh, to an HTML file. Uh, that way you, you see um, the resulting HTML file at the end of it. Uh, we basically just iterate through a list of files we've been collecting and just output it as an HTML file. Now, there are a bunch of constants in here that you noticed. Um, it's, it's all stored in another file called constant.cs. Um, and this could very well have been just a uh, config file, uh, maybe perhaps a JSON file that we could have read into the program. But for the sake of simplicity, I just made it to a constant. Um, I think that's about it. There is a m markup file that I created, but in Visual Studio, it, it doesn't read markup files natively, and I downloaded download an, ex an extension that does it, but the extension creates a JavaScript error, which is kind of funny. Um, but anyway, that was one of the other bonuses. Um, on the tests. Um, also, we have code um, unit testing and code coverage. So these are the unit tests. You can see that one of them was failing. It's because I was running uh, the application while I was connected to my home Wi-Fi. And like I said, I've already reached my limit for the day. So let's see what the unit test looks like um, with it now running on my cell phone, which I'm hoping I didn't uh, reach my limit for the day as well, but we'll see. Let's run uh, code coverage. It's going to rerun all the unit tests. And I'm hoping that for the downloader.cs, we would have as close to 100% um, code coverage as possible. Now, it's not always possible to test every scenario um, in a code coverage because some of the scenarios are the exception scenarios. So the fact that I have a live connection to the internet and that I'm able to fetch uh, images, that means I'm not going to be able to uh, test some of the negative testing, which is when there is an exception. Um, oh, the, there you go. Um, my downloader class indeed indeed is 100% code coverage. Um, let's actually verify that. I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> uh, let's double check the file. Yep, that's what I said. I'm a little skeptical because there's no way with the 100% coverage because these are the exception for when I have no internet connection 
or when I've reached my daily limit for a day, which of course I haven't because I was able to retrieve the images. And uh, so anyway, um, this is as close as I can get to 100% coverage. Um, you know, it's pretty good. I think the uh, Visual Studio um, code analytics there is kind of failing a little bit. Um, but as you can see, only the red parts are um, not covered in the code coverage. It actually has an op opposite state. When I don't have a uh, good connection to the internet or when when I've reached my quota, the red parts, I should uh, date this one turns blue, for example. <laughs> so again, I can only test one or the other. I can't test both. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, let's actually analyze the code for any... Um, do, do, do. Let's do the code analysis on the solution. Uh, basically, we're just going to see if Microsoft can detect any funkiness in the code. Um, I don't think... Yeah, there's nothing. I don't... Yeah, I don't think I have anything funky in uh, my code, so there's no errors, no warning. Um, uh, well, perhaps that. <laughs> that's that's very minor. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's code coverage-wise, um, we're pretty good. Um, you know, as far as unit testing goes. So yeah, I mean, that's basically it's a very very simple program. Again, let me run that one more time. Let me delete that temp folder hit start and again um, this is all in github and I will go ahead and publish make this public um, pretty soon uh, let's see if I'm, I might do some more last minute code refactoring uh, there you there you go as you can see the, the program is working and there's the result again well anyway this is in I think the last part of this that I haven't done yet is the docker portion um, I don't know if I'm gonna go the X mile and make this run in a docker container um, the program is so simple. If you've got Visual Studio and you've got access to GitHub, you'll be able to download and run this program. Uh, the only external part of the program that I had to refer to is the... Um, uh, let's see, where is it? It's the uh, newtonsoft.json, which many, many c -sharp programmers uh, uh, use when they're manipulating JSON. So. Anyway, this is in. I believe this should meet um, practically all of the uh, test criterias. Anyway, thanks, guys. Bye.